Hello and welcome to Chrome Computing. In this video, we'll be looking at what specifications you need to look for when buying a Chromebook in 2020. I've owned a Chromebook right back from the beginning in 2011, and back then the Chromebook was a really basic computer. Fast forward to 2020 and things have changed a lot. It's great news, obviously, for the Chromebook. Um, Chrome OS is a really streamlined operating system, so you don't necessarily need as much power as you would if you was getting a computer for, say, Microsoft Windows. That being said, that has changed a lot over the last few years, and that's because the Chrome OS operating system has become more powerful. You can do a lot more with it. So it's important to know what you should be looking for when buying a Chromebook in 2020. It obviously does depend on your budget and what you're looking for, whether you're looking for a budget Chromebook, a mid-range Chromebook, or a high-spec Chromebook. So first of all, let's have a look at the main differences. A budget Chromebook will typically be a laptop that will cost under £300, $300. Generally speaking, it will be a plastic body. Um, the processor, you would expect it would be an Intel Celeron processor. The RAM, you'd expect to see 4GB of RAM. And the storage with a budget Chromebook, you'd be looking at 32GB, 64GB around that some chromebooks may come with more than that you would hope to see a decent display and decent connectivity the issue with some budget chromebooks well most budget chromebooks is the display and as far as i'm concerned if you're going to be using a laptop one of the main things obviously you want it to perform well but one of the main things is that the display is good a lot of budget Chromebooks, especially if you go for Chromebooks under say 12 and a half inches, for example, the resolution you usually get 720p. Now there's nothing wrong with a 720p display, if that's what you're looking for. Um, there's some decent Chromebooks with a 720p display, but I do think the best display for a laptop is a full HD 1080 by 1920 and that's full HD. Now it's very difficult to get a full HD display on a Chromebook under 12 and a half inches in display size in the budget category. And that's because a small display to get full HD on that costs the manufacturer a lot more than what it does to get a full HD display on a 14 inch dis display. And you can see that if you have a look at the Chromebooks out there, if you look at any of the budget Chromebooks below 13 inches, 12 and a half inches, there's not many, if in fact I don't think there's any, there's possibly a couple you can find with a full HD 1080p display. Now you then look at the budget Chromebooks in the 14 inch category and you will see that a lot of them, they're still going to wrong, some are still using 720p, but a lot of them use a 1080p display and they're not necessarily more expensive than the ones with the smaller display. So that's one thing you do need to consider with the budget Chromebook. I'd say over anything else, is the display, making sure that display is decent. Again, you'd also want to make sure it's got an IPS panel as well, because the IPS panel not only makes the images and the, the colors just look better, it's the viewing angle. So without an IPS display, you may have seen it if you brought a Chromebook and, or any sort of laptop and wasn't aware of what the display quality was like. If it's not IPS, as soon as you're not looking at the display directly on, it starts to deteriorate, it's very hard to see. They're the worst displays. So if you go in to be getting a budget Chromebook, definitely make sure it's got an IPS display and ideally you want 1080p. So that's most likely going to put you into a more of a 14 inch range, because as I says, it's gonna be difficult to get a 1080p in a, low, in a lower display budget Chromebook. In relation to the Intel Celeron processor, that's fine, that you're not gonna get really anything better on a budget Chromebook. The Intel Celeron processor will perform fine for things like spreadsheets, word processing, streaming the internet, st not st searching the internet, sorry, streaming HD movies on YouTube. Um, most budget Chromebooks nowadays come with Android apps, so you'll be okay with that as long as you get a newer model. And an Intel Celeron processor will work fine with most 
Android apps, you've got to bear in mind, it is, it is, it's an Intel Celeron processor, so it's not going to be super fast. So it will be okay, but it won't be super fast. Four gigabyte of RAM minimum, definitely. Um, storage so way size, you need, ideally you need 64 gigabyte, but you may get somewhere 32 gigabyte. That's not too bad. It depends on how many Android apps you would want to install. If you're looking to install a lot of Android apps, you may struggle with 32 gigabyte of storage. Then we go on to the mid-spec, mid-range Chromebook, and I think they're the ones that offer the best value and the best quality overall much better than the budget Chromebooks, not as expensive as the high spec Chromebooks. The mid range is definitely the, the best to get if, if you can afford it. And it's, I would say they're the Chromebooks that sell the most. Now with a mid range Chromebook, you're talking about anything between maybe 350 to about 600, 650 pounds dollars. With a mid-range Chromebook, you'd expect it to be aluminium casing. It's not the end of the world if it's not, but usually you would expect to see aluminium casing. Um, in display size, if you do get a smaller one and it's mid and it's a mid-spec price Chromebook, I would not be expecting to get a 12 and a half inch display, for example, with a 720p resolution. Absolute no way. If I'm paying mid-range prices. I'd expect to see a 1080p, whether it's a 12 and a half inch display or whether it's a 15 inch display. So it's definitely got to have full A, full HD, 1920 by 1080. And you'll see the difference. If you've used a 720p, it's okay on a small display, but as soon as you go to like 14 inch, it's, I personally don't like the look of it. It looks quite um, it's just everything's too big and it's not very good quality. So I will definitely be look, looking for a full HD display. When it comes to mid-range on the processor side of things, you'd expect at least an Intel M3 processor. Now I say at least an Intel M3 processor, that doesn't mean that that's not good. An Intel M3 processor performs perfectly well, if I'm being honest with you, with Chrome OS. Again, for streaming the internet, searching the internet, I'm saying streaming again, searching the internet, streaming HD movies, using Android apps, you won't have any problems at all with um, an Intel M3 processor. Obviously, if you want more power, then you'd be looking at the Intel i processors. That starts with the Intel i3, the Intel i5, and the Intel i7. Intel i3 is only a Bits better than an M3, if I'm being completely honest with you, is better, but not marginally, you know, you wouldn't see a massive difference. You start to see a bigger difference when you start getting to the Intel i5. So Intel i5, that's then getting much more powerful. And that's what you'd expect to see. You, it's unlikely you'd get an Intel i7 in the mid-spec price range. Intel i5, yes, possibly just about. You most, most of the processors in the mid-range are M3, which are perfectly fine to use, or uh, i3 possibly as well. In relation to the RAM, you'd be looking at four gigabyte RAM absolute minimum, and that's fine. You, again, you can use most of the apps that you want to use on Android store with four gigabyte of RAM. Um, it, you won't have any problems with using the internet, streaming movies, that's absolutely fine. However, Chromebooks are starting to get more RAM nowadays, so 8 gig of RAM will be much more beneficial to you. Certainly when you consider if you might be looking to use Linux apps. Not many people use Linux apps. We don't know yet where they will go in the future. It's great it's there for Chrome OS. I'm still not convinced their Linux apps is for the masses because there is a bit of a learning curve. It's not as easy as using a normal operating system such as Chrome OS, and it's not as easy as using Android apps. So we'll have to wait to see where we go with Linux. But if you are interested in Linux, then eight gigabyte of RAM is definitely required. Now, with storage for a mid-range, I would say absolute minimum should be 64 gigabyte, but I would be expecting ideally about 128 gigabyte of storage. That will allow you to install plenty of Android apps and it will still leave you some space over for local storage if you want to store files locally. However, you shouldn't really be storing files locally because there's a risk you may you know, lose them if you break your Chromebook, for example. You should be taking advantage of the fact that the Chromebook is a cloud computer and you can save files in the cloud using Google Drive is the best because Google Drive 
is part of Google and the Chromebook is a Google operating system, Chrome OS is a Google operating system, so they seamlessly work together. So you should you should be getting into the habit of saving your files in the cloud anyway. So the storage on your Chromebook is more to do with what you'll be doing locally, and that's installing Android apps at the moment. So 64 gigabyte to minimum, I would say, to 128 gigabyte would be more beneficial on a mid-spec Chromebook. I've already touched on the display, it needs to be a full HD and you also want it to have an IPS panel or something similar. There's not many that have their own panels other than using IPS so that's definitely something you would want to be looking for as well. You'd want a decent keyboard on a mid-spec Chromebook and you'd want decent connectivity as well. Now looking at the high-spec Chromebooks, High spec Chromebooks, there's not many of them about, but you do see a few. For example, the Pixelbooks, the previous Pixelbooks, they were definitely high spec. The Asus 713 Chromebook, that's high spec, and it, it, it's a great Chromebook, by the way, because it's got great resolution. The main difference with high spec Chromebooks is generally the build. You're expecting a superior build quality. You're expecting at least an Intel i5 processor to an Intel i7 processor, 8 gigabyte of RAM absolute minimum. If it's not got 8 gigabyte of RAM, in my opinion, it's not a high spec Chromebook. Storage, 128 gigabyte absolute minimum. That's absolute minimum. 128 gigabyte is fine, but when you're looking at high spec Chromebook and the price you're paying, you shouldn't really be looking for anything less than 128 gigabyte. 256 gigabyte storage would be great. Main difference, as I said, is the build quality with high spec. But the second one, and it's, it's not by any far the least, is the display. On a high spec Chromebook, you should be expecting something magnificent with the display. And this is a slight problem I've had with a few of the Chromebooks released um, in the last year or so. They've come with high spec prices. I'm not going to mention any names. But they've come with high spec prices, but there's not much difference. The display is a full HD 1920 by 1080. And I'm thinking, well, what is the difference between that Chromebook that has got a high spec price of, say, a thousand, compared to the one that costs six hundred pounds? What, what's what's the what's the main difference? And the main difference is they might give you an Intel i7 processor rather than an Intel i3 processor. I don't think that's enough to call something a high spec Chromebook. For me, a high spec Chromebook needs to be giving you more on the display. And what I mean by that is it needs to give you a higher resolution. So the Acer 713 comes with a much higher resolution. The Pixel Slate, I know it's not around much anymore, but the Pixel Slate comes with 3000 by 2000. And by God, you can tell that the display quality is absolutely fantastic. So that's what you'd be expecting if you was going for a high spec Chromebook. As I says, most people would want to go for a mid-range Chromebook because that offers nearly everything you would need. One thing we've not touched on much is connectivity. Connectivity is the port that the Chromebook uses. I don't think this matters whether it's a budget Chromebook, mid-range or a high-range Chromebook. You want a certain amount of connectivity. For example, if you want to use headphones, you want to make sure it's got a headphone jack. If you want to use your, if you've got um, older type peripherals with USB-A, ideally you want to make sure it's got a USB-A connection because the newer Chromebooks use USB Type C. USB Type C is definitely better. It's, a, it's the new USB port that most Chromebooks use. Some of the modern Chromebooks don't have a USB-C and a USB-A. And they do that because it can allow them to make the Chromebook thinner and it, it just looks nicer. And that's okay, you can get an adapter and you can simply plug the adapter into the USB Type-C port and then that will then give you a USB-A output. That's fine, but it does mean having to use an adapter. So that's something to bear in mind. And the other thing is a micro SD card. If you're looking to install further storage down the line, you would ideally want it to have a micro SD card as well. You would obviously expect all Chromebooks to have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So in summary then, it's really down to how much money you want to spend on your Chromebook. A Chromebook, whether you're buying a budget Chromebook 
or a mid-range Chromebook or a high-spec Chromebook, the good thing is they'll all perform pretty decently, and that's because Chrome OS, as I said, is very lightweight, so it's not too demanding. If you want to get the most, I would opt for mid-range, and that's because you're gonna get a full HD display, you're gonna have a decent keyboard, that's what you should be looking for, definitely a decent keyboard if you need to do a lot of typing. You're going to be looking for four gigabyte RAM minimum, eight gigabyte ideally, storage, 64 gigabyte really minimum, 128 gigabyte. So that's what the range I'd go for. The size, it depends. The 14 inch is the most common, but you do get ones with 13 inches, 13.3, 12 and a half. I quite like the ones with a slightly smaller display than 14 inch because they're a lot more compact and they're mainly in the mid range um, of Chromebooks. You would really get that, as I says, with the budget Chromebooks because they then come with 720p and a lot of them don't have an IPS panel. So I hope that has helped you to decide what you need to look for when buying a Chromebook in 2020. If you did, please like below and subscribe to the channel for future videos and thanks for watching.